I don't know if you can tell. I don't think you can. But I have not washed my hair with regular shampoo today. What? That's right. Because I worked out, I woke up, I made fitness, and then I used my sneaky little secret, Batiste. And you know what I love about Batiste foam? It's not like regular dry shampoo because sometimes dry shampoos make my hair wet, dry, and straw-like and, uh, and pretty gnarly. But I love Batiste foam. It's the newest addition to my non-wash routine. I insist on a non-wash routine, especially these days, right? Who's got the time? Instead of absorbing oil and adding body like dry shampoo, Batiste foam gently moisturizes normal or dry hair, leaving it smelling delicious and feeling soft. That's the best part. It's, it's just moisturizing. It feels wonderful. With one dollop of Batiste foam, you'll have a hair refresh in just 60 seconds. Feel great for yourself. Batiste foam to be you is refreshing. All right, Jean, are you ready to be counted in? I'm ready. Ready in Hamesh, Agba, Shalosh, Stein, Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at Where my mom's wearing thongs, hitting bongs at Raising kids, cleaning shits, need a long nap Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at Where my mom's at podcast With Christina P (laughs) Hello, welcome Moms, dads, trans moms, trans dads Latins, Latin X, cisgendered, non cisgendered, non binaries. <laughs> Who else am I forgetting? Who else am I forgetting? Ableist, non ableist. Have I remembered everybody I can address in the audience? <laughs> Hello. I'm glad to be here. Email me where my mom's at at gmail.com. Leave me a voicemail 213 375 5184. We talk about all things parent, all things mom, all things dad. There's a lot of dads that listen to this show, too. We're going to get to you guys in a moment. Um, so big day for me. Yesterday, I turned farty fart, farty fart years old, and my husband dared me to fart 44 times in the day to celebrate it. That just goes to show you how we do it at our house. Um, I don't know if I made that. I don't know if I did it 44 times, but I have to tell you that birthdays are different for me now like I used to get really depressed when it was my birthday when I turned 30 I thought I was gonna die like you know you're like I don't even why wake up and be 30 and now I'm like so thankful to be here in my mid 40s and to be healthy and to have two children and I don't know I guess I've just I've surrendered to being middle-aged and I and I know I'm middle-aged because this is so embarrassing and I I don't know how to quite say this um but I was at dinner I I, um was talking to two friends and I I go what kind of music are you listening to and my friend who's in their 40s he goes well I like easy listening (laughs) and then Tom goes Christina you like easy listening too and I was like wait a minute you mean that stuff that's like baby come back (laughs) like you can have it all Oh, me like that. That's what I've been listening to <laughs> in our house. Not like a regular yeah. mom. I'm a cool mom. On the weekends and I like the Bee Gees, I've been really into like night fever, night fever. Like just nothing that challenges me or makes me feel too angry. Like just light. So I'm into easy listening and that's cool. Like that's just, that's where I'm at. Um, so I drank a lot last night. I'm pretty hungover, uh, but it was worth it. And I was talking to, so again, one of our friends is a physician and he has a lot of old people that he takes care of. And, um, and he goes, you know, the, what they say the most that I hear from old people is the happiest time in their lives is when they were raising their children because they felt so needed and so loved. And it's like simultaneously the hardest time in your life and it's supposed to be the best. And I was like, oh, wow, that's, hmm. I don't know. (laughs) It is. It is. It's like the best of times. It's the worst of times. Right. So anyway, I just thought I would share that with you because, um, you know, when you're in it, you're like, this is fuck. How am I going to get through this? And then all of a sudden, I guess you're through it and your kid's a teenager 
and then I uh, know then you're done. But I guess it is like that, you know, with stand up, I was thinking back to my early days when I would do um, biker bars and like just hell, hell gigs, um, seafood restaurants, hibachi grills. I, d yeah, I would do like men's lodges, like all the stuff that today would never fly. <laughs> um, and just being in it and being like, this is horrible. I, this will never be a fond memory. And then it becomes a fond memory. Because <laughs> then you're like, I was living it. I was in it. You're, you're alive. You know you're alive. And you know you're, you're here. And uh, you're cisgendered. And you're <laughs> ableist. Well, sure. yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think you look back on it because when you were going through it, it sucked. Yeah. But when you look back on it, you realize like, you know what? That actually helped me build some character. You yeah. Know? Like, that helped me like uh, uh, sharpen my teeth a little bit. Yeah. And especially when you're young and you can like take the punches, you, you know, you, I mean, at least I just got beaten up on the road for like at least six or seven years of just getting your ass handed to you so much. And then you become a, a warrior and you're like, fuck this. Fuck you. Fuck you. I can do this. <sighs> okay. Um, we have so many things to get to. So many people have written in. I appreciate all the, the emails and the voicemails and stuff. We got a lot of stuff to get into. Let's just roll with it right now. Here's some general stuff you guys have sent in. Some general questions and emails. J -j -j general questions. <laughs> Sorry, we don't have a. We that don't was have a drop for that. Terrible. Nah. Don't ever. <laughs> God, it's all. Sorry, sorry. That take it again. Was just. Everyone back to one. Stop. I got you some bedding. Let's talk about it. Oh yeah, you did. So I know you sleep on a good bed. You have a sofa mattress, but I was like, thank you. I just had the feeling. You asked me about sheets. You were like, do you actually use Brooklyn? And I go, yeah, we well, do. Yeah, because I remember this all started with uh, with you saying um, anyone who doesn't have white sheets isn't an adult. Yeah. And that really resonated with me. Because <laughs> I was like, why would I have the white sheets? Like then yeah. if there are stains, you'll definitely be able to see them. Right. And, and they're like, you, yeah, you shouldn't have stains. You don't have stains when you're in your adulthood. Right. Right. Or if you do, you just throw them in the wash. I mean, look, I like to go old school European on my bedding. European. European. I like clean white cotton mm. sheets. Mm. Mm. Clean white cotton. I mean, like, because it definitely, it feels, I know sleeping in a hotel bed, just the sheets are right? so much better than any sheets I've ever had at home. Right. Because it's the illusion of, it, it makes your bedding feel glamorous that you're wearing like you're wearing. You're using crisp white. Mm -hmm. oh, I love it. It has like patented cooling technology or some <laughs> sort of bullshit. It's called I'd, cotton. It's just cotton. That's just cotton? Well, because here's the deal. This is going to be so boring to it, people who aren't in It breathes. Sheets. It breathes easy. Never buy sateen. Never get that sateen. It makes you sweat. Don't get, um, you know, wool or whatever. Yeah, that like gets caught on you. Mm. Just cotton. Plain, plain, plain. White, white, white. You just bleach it. You throw a little bleach in there. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Yeah. And then, so this is what's crazy to me is that mm. when, uh, when I told you I was getting the bedding and stuff, Right. And you were like, okay, so right when you're done with it, uh, or right when you get it, you know, throw it into the wash with a special bleach. And I was like, wait, I need to wash it before <laughs> I use it the first yeah. time? Yeah. That was wild to me. Yeah. I didn't realize that was something I needed to do. <laughs> you know what? And in, and in all honesty, I, I used to be the kind of person that would get clothing, too, in the mail or whatever, and I would just wear it. And then uh, I heard someone talking Wait, you about need to it. Do that with clothing too. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, because it comes from a factory and it's probably you know been dyed or no, yeah, machined. This, is, this you all know. makes sense. Oh, it's so gross. No, yeah, yeah. It, no, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But you're gonna be elevated to like people status once you sleep on nice bedding. It's yeah. really gonna change your life. You know, I realize now that YMH. Yeah. has been there for every milestone in my sleeping career. Because <laughs> before you guys, I was sleeping on a $200 hand-me-down Ikea mattress <laughs> yeah. that I got off the guy in college that was living in the room before me. Oh, yeah. And then I was sleeping on that. That was already so used, and I was sleeping on that for 10 years. Yeah, and so did we. Like, when we were broke comics, I inherited a mattress from a comedian who inherited it from another comedian. <laughs> And yeah. Tom, when I told him, he was like, what? Yeah. This is like a 20-year-old mattress that other comedians have owned. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I didn't even realize that, like, like when people... Ugh. I remember you guys saying that you would look forward to sleep, and I'm like, oh, that must... Like, when you guys were talking about sattva, and I was like, yeah. oh, that must be in the copy or something. You know? <laughs> no, but then that's... but then you guys hooked me up. I was like, man, is that sattva actually really good? And you're like, we're, we're hooking you up, homie. Yeah. And then I got the deepest... I was like, oh, Best. so this is the difference between a good mattress and an Ikea mattress. Well, let me tell you, I you know, I don't really... Let me tell you my whole philosophy on being an adult. Yeah, okay? preach. Yeah. yeah, here's what I learned. By the time I was in my late 30s, this is what you need as an adult, as a functioning adult, okay? Mm -hmm. You need a stable uh, relationship. Okay, not you. You're still young. You're still looking, but yeah. it, it helps. And then once you've got the relationship down, you've got kind of a home built, right? Mm -hmm. You need good bedding. Essential. It is essential because you spend so much time in your bed. Yeah, when you think of it that way, it's like... You should legit be investing more in your bed than your car. Yeah. Well, I don't know, more, but you should get a, get a nice car. That's another one because you spend a lot of time in your car in mm -hmm. L.A. Mm -hmm. You need a team of people. You need, you need to keep your feet and your hands clean, especially as a woman. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> hands it's and your feet clean. Fucking, you know how disgusting it is to see a woman with nasty feet? It's disgusting. Sure, but, I mean, just then don't nasty. look at the feet then. No, 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 no. I'm that's, saying, that's the workaround. No, 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 no. I'm saying as a woman... <laughs> Here's what you need. You need yeah. nice hands, nice feet. You need your brows. So you need someone who does your brows. Oh then you God. need your hair did. So you got someone that you trust with your hair. It's a whole. This is so much stuff. It's so much stuff. But I'm a 44 year old grown ass mom woman. And this is all, this is all the maintenance that I require. And dental. You need to go get your teeth cleaned and oh, yeah. fixed. How, when's the last that. time you did that? <sighs> Um, I want to say last time I got a teeth cleaning was maybe two years ago. I definitely need to get on it, though. Okay, so you need to get your teeth cleaned. Yeah, I need to do that. But, you know, and, and in all honesty, I was going – I had one scheduled. I had a cleaning and a whitening scheduled Ooh. three months ago. Oh, and then <laughs> – and the then, world ended. yeah, and then, and I was just like, well, I don't, yeah. I don't believe in a higher power, but I think this is a sign to let my teeth rot in, so, my, in yeah. my head. Yeah, of course. The, clearly, <laughs> that was the message. That's, yeah, that was my takeaway. But you do, you have to maintain. And the older you get, thankfully, hopefully, the more resources you have to maintain yourself. Because as you age, you don't look as good unless you do all this shit. <laughs> That's what right. nobody tells you. That I have to get my hair done, my teeth done, my nails, da, 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 so that I just look presentable mm. um, the older you get. So... That's my advice. Oh, you need to wash your face. And men never. Wait, what? Yeah, you don't wash. Tom doesn't wash For his what? face. For what? But I wash it while I'm showering. Yeah, you could do that. Do you, you have to brush twice a day? Do Wait, you floss? Hold on. When you mean washing it. Yeah, at night. Before you go to bed, you wash off your makeup as a woman. Right. But I mean, like, do I need to do something extra than just, like, letting the shampoo for my hair just yes. run over my face? Yes. Like what? <laughs> do I have to what, buy What, like you? with a bar of soap? You need a woman. Can I? Let me tell you something. <laughs> I know a lot of men listen, and I'm so thankful that you do. But listen, do you, do you hear this, women? Do you hear this? This sad bachelor. I didn't even know these were things I needed to do. Sad bachelor existence. This is why we have to raise our boys <laughs> to know how to do their own laundry, to use. It. Let me ask Chris. Chris, do you wash your face with a different soap? I'm going to go. Hold on. I'm going to guess that Chris does know these things and i'm gonna guess that chris flosses well yeah he's normal Sh no let chris talk <laughs> chris do you wash your face with the soap so i wash my face when i shower okay um at night i just run some water over it though i don't use any soap but you at least have the decency to run water over your face yeah but that's more of a to stave off acne from building up smart now do you floss no hesitation wow okay I do. I you do. floss? I, uh, you know, I, I, I listened to, I don't think this episode or the Two Bears episode would come out soon, but, you know, Bert was talking about how he just has, like, things of the, uh, of the flossers, just packs of flossers. Yeah, yeah. When I, after every time I eat, I'm, you know, I always run those through my teeth, my teeth. Okay, your toothies. My teeth or several ones. Yeah, I mean, look, guys, this is basic hygiene. And, 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 <laughs> and, and, and the women listening. Yeah. Listen, yeah. women. I'm going to make you a, a plea. Raise your sons to know they have to floss every day, wash their faces twice a day, morning and night, flossing in the morning, flossing at night. There's a separate product for the face. 
Uh, they had to keep their nails clean. And also wives, wives, it's your responsibility to keep the husband looking normal, okay? <laughs> Don't let your husband go out wearing um, Birkenstocks. We've discussed that on the show. Tevas are disgusting. Don't let him go out wearing uh, shoes without socks and then their feet get all sweaty and smelly. Don't let your husband wear uh, khaki shorts. Don't let your husband leave the house looking like an asshole. That's how you know that a woman doesn't care for the man anymore. When he leaves the house looking like a, 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 a unfuckable, unfuckable loser. You cannot, it's your, it's your responsibility as the woman to clean them up, to trim their nose hair, to trim their ear hair. I trim my husband's back hair. I trim his neck hair. I trim the nose hair. I get the eyebrows, the long wonky eyebrows. That's all we do as women. We care for everyone else in the house, including ourselves. Wait, how long does it take to, to help Tom in, in those routines? Like, okay. is it, do you do it all at once, like once a month? Or is it like how? No, no. Twi every Show me the way, Christina. Sure, sure. Here you go. So here, when you do marry somebody, I hope if you want to get married someday. Sure, I hope sure. you do. Yeah. The woman, so I have to shave his head, okay? I got to look for the spots that he misses because he shaves his own head oh, now. Oh, you're the one that does that? Well, he does it first and then I find the spots. Oh, so, it's a team effort. It's a team effort. And then I use a different uh, clippers and I trim his neck hair and his back hair and I make sure the line on his beard looks normal. And then I... Um, I go, I do a pass on the eyebrows. I make sure he doesn't have any crazy eyebrows. Wait, eyebrows? Nose what hair. Type, is it just like the ones that go off in different directions? Yes, okay. straight. Like, so when you pull on your eyebrows, if there's like a longy, mm -hmm. men get those in their 40s, you got to get oh. rid. I, uh, I look for any acne that needs management, pimples that need popping. I'm constantly on the search for that. I love that. I actually enjoy that. I'm one of those sick people. You like just, popping pimples? Just Tom's. Just Tom's. Mine and Tom's. No one else's in my life, though. Have you ever yeah. watched those videos no. on YouTube of people popping no. pimples? No, I'm not that disgusting. Oh, I don't like goodness, that. Goodness, thank God. <laughs> <I don't like laughs> that. But it, it's like we're monkeys, right? Like you see those um, videos of the monkeys grooming. We're, what are we? What, Chris, how far off are our genetics from monkeys? What is it? How many percentage <laughs> off from the, from those yeah, you creatures? Know you know this stuff. Come on. I have no idea. Oh, for fuck's number. sake. Give us the number, genius. What uh, was your SAT? Uh, Quick. Two. Two percent. <laughs> We're two percent off from monkeys. And that's what they do is they groom each other. You see? That's a, 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 a fundamental behaviors. And if a wife doesn't do that for you, gentlemen, she doesn't love you anymore and she doesn't care about you getting you know, doesn't care about fucking you. And I also believe that feeding men is important too. I, that's just me. I feed my husband. I think it's important to put a plate, food of a plate full of food in front of your husband because that's all they want. It's so fucking simple. That's what Dr. Drew and I are always talking about. It's so simple. They just want food, laid, attention, approval. And what else? What else do you guys need? Laundry done? I don't do it. I outsource it. Um... Wing Grooming. stop, but that falls under food. Food. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Ranch, <laughs> that's also food. Sex, uh, food. Yeah, that's under fuck. Yep. Approval. Yep. Appro approval. Validation. Validation. Definitely some validation is, is, validation is a good part of the diet. Validation. And I know, I know, I know this generation said, oh, Christina, there's no difference between the genders. Okay, bullshit. Okay. I've lived long enough. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But there is, there is, because men are way more simple than we are. They're way simpler. Damn, so you have you have dudes all figured out, and let me tell you Go that ahead. proportionally, dudes do not have women figured out, I don't think. I don't think so. Like what, so you know yeah. what a husband needs, but do husbands know. know what a wife needs? Oh, we're way more complex. <sighs> yeah. I mean, it's so, because it changes. Okay, here's what we need. Okay. We need consistency, but not boringness. Try to riddle that one. <laughs> we want you to be there all the time, but not to the point where you annoy the shit out of us. We want, we want to feel desired, but safe at the same time. We want you to help with the kids, but do it right. Do it our way. <laughs> Don't do it your way. Do it my way. We want you to do all the chores that we want you to do, but do them our way. 
we want you we want you to listen oh right but you don't it's want us so to much. solve the problem right don't that's solve an important the problem one. just listen to the problem just listen to the problem right, that's a big one it's it's hard i know <laughs> that's what i'm saying like i to articulate it i have to think about it a bit more no yeah you guys have it you guys have it so much easier than us i know that's why it's like it's like i i am a feminist but at the same time i'm like do I really want as much responsibility <laughs> for things like you can just get a dude, just have my husband do it for me. <laughs> if I manipulate him with sex and food and approval, just make him do it. And it's so much easier. I can just focus on the kids, you know, but you can't say that out loud. Okay. All right. Let's get into some generals, general questions. Here you go. Um, my stubborn 10 month old refuses formula and only due to the recent stay at home order orders have I been able to continue breastfeeding. My supplies started dwindling when I returned to work. My goal is to get to 12 months when I can transition her to cow's milk. She's the cutest pain in the ass ever. So I fully expect the process to be awful. I want my body back, but I'm tired of cringing when my husband touches my mushy purples. For inspiration, would you please share your breastfeeding weaning stories? Oh, Kelly from Omaha. Oh, jeans. It is, you know what, though? No one prepared me for how sad I would be when I actually did wean my children. And uh, it's hard. It's sad. It's so hard. I did not make it to 12 months. I know you're supposed to. I think I made it to like four and change on Ellis and then five months on, on Julian. And um, luckily, my boys were such hosses, like both of them, that when I gave them a bottle of formula, they were like, thanks. <laughs> and they would just chug it and fall asleep. So I was really lucky in that regard. Um, but you know, for me, it was, it, I think it's just a kind of a natural thing where you, you would like skip a feeding cause you were busy or you, you the, the timing didn't work out between you and the kids. So you just kind of slowly stop, uh, pumping or stop expressing the milk. And what I would do is I would just sleep at night, like six hours, um, without pumping or, and then you gen gently go to eight hours without waking up in the night to pump or feed anybody. And then that to me, cut back my supply. But uh, it's heartbreaking. It's so sad that the last time you do it, sometimes you don't know that's going to be the last time that you breastfeed your baby. And it's, um, it's, so, it's so sweet. That just made me think of that clip we showed on your mom's house where that woman had what, like a seven and a nine-year-old girl, girls yeah. that she was breastfeeding. Yeah, that's pretty wild, <laughs> that's huh? That's so wild. But I can kind of understand it because it is such a beautiful bonding thing that it's really – a beautiful thing you know and but i mean it it, it, it transitions from beautiful to creepy like <laughs> like I know. I, like even faster than overnight like i think like there's a probably like a fine i think once they no. probably say a word in english once they have a first word that's definitely time to stop right you know my thinking was always once they had teeth and once they started eating um human food like regular food mm -hmm. i was always like yeah but they're getting now they're, they're getting right half the nutrition from food and then by, by by five or six months, I felt comfortable being like, okay, you're eating now. Oh, five or six months, not five or six years. No, <laughs> five or six <laughs> months. <laughs> and they're already eating solids. So Now, what you know. what if, now here's a hypothetical. Yes. What if one morning, um, either Alice or, or Julian walk into your walk into your room and they're like, Mommy, Mama. give me my reward. <laughs> and then they're like, nom, 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 and they just want they want the milk. The tetas, they don't. Mm -hmm. They don't. You know, they they. But what like... if they explicitly ask? Oh, for that's it. funny. I don't. <laughs> you can't give it because the milk the supply dwindles. So you don't. I don't have any milk in my tits anymore. Mm. So they'd have to like. Is that how you'd say it to them? Yeah, I'd be like, hey, <laughs> mom, doesn't got no tits in these milk. No milk in these tits now, mom. I'm so hungover today. I can't even talk. I'm like saying things backwards. Ooh, you got ripped last night. And by ripped, I mean I had like two and a half glasses of red wine. <laughs> oh. It was lit, bro. Yeah. And we broke proto and went out to a restaurant. And I'm so I was like so excited. But I went with doctors, so I was like, if they're not scared, I'm not scared. Right. Yeah. They're the canary in the gold mine. Is that what does that mean exactly? Canary in the gold mine. Is it in a coal mine? 
coal. Yep. All right. Chris has corrected <laughs> me. It's actually a coal mine. See, I don't know these American sayings as well because my parents never use them. What no, but mean? like what? Because uh, I think canaries have a very delicate system. So uh, oh. miners would bring a canary down with them. And as soon as the canary either starts chirping or dying, yeah. <laughs> then it's time to head out of the mine. <laughs> Got you. Right, right. So they're my canaries. They, mm-hmm. th- I keep my eye on them. And yeah. if they look sick, I'm out. Yeah. Exactly. Nobody, yeah, if they no. start freaking out, it's like, oh, canary's freaking out. Time to get out of the mine. That's what I'm saying. I keep my eyes on, on the doctors, and they're, they're fine. <clears throat> but um, but it, uh, just say, I'm just telling you to be prepared to feel sad, <clears throat> which is so weird. I didn't, I didn't know I would feel sad. And I also felt sad when my babies transitioned to toddlerhood Because there's a time when they, you know, once they start walking and they want to explore the world and it it is a time of like, oh, you were attached to me for like a year and now you're not. And, and it's a transition and it's, it's like bittersweet. So good luck, Kelly and Omaha. I like Omaha. Did you know that Omaha is actually very cool? There's like a downtown that's really cool. Yeah, I had fun in it. I like Omaha. I'm going to go back to that club. What if I told you you could get high quality organic and non-GMO groceries delivered to your door for a lot less than you're paying now and help out families in need? That's what I'm doing since I discovered Thrive Market. As a proud Thrive Market member, I get the products I love and my paid membership provides a free one for someone in need like a low-income family, teacher, veteran, or first responder. I actually do. I use Thrive. I love it for this reason that I'm helping somebody else and the products are fantastic. Non-GMO, you can do a spe- if you have any uh, special diets, paleo, keto, plant-based. They have all these wonderful products and I'm saving 25 to 50% off traditional retail prices and their carbon neutral shipping is free on orders over $49. So I feel great about getting a great deal and um, yeah, I help people. So Try Thrive Market and become a member risk-free. Go to thrivemarket.com slash WMMA. Join today and you'll get up to $20 in shopping credit towards your first order. That's T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash WMMA to start your risk-free membership and get up to $20 towards your first order. Thrivemarket.com slash WMMA. There are many paths to finding your family story. Whichever way you choose, tracing your family generations back with a family tree or uncovering your ethnicity with Ancestry DNA, it's easy to get started with Ancestry. An Ancestry DNA test tells you where your ancestors are from. And Ancestry's billions of records and millions of family trees let you discover their personal stories. You could find that you have a famous relative or perhaps a photo of your great grandma as a little girl. Whatever you find, it's sure to change the whole way you look at your family history and yourself. After all, the story of your family is the story of you. There you go. Ancestry DNA doesn't just tell you which countries you're from, but also can pinpoint the specific regions within them, giving you insightful geographic detail about your history. So start exploring your family story today. Head to my URL at Ancestry.com slash WMMA to get your Ancestry DNA kit and start your free trial. That's Ancestry.com slash WMMA. Okay. So this, uh, Kate writes, I'm not a mom, but an avid TikTok user who loves the things no one tells you about giving birth slash postpartum life videos. What did you encounter during your experience momming and birthing that you were like, why the fuck did no one warn me about this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I think in all fairness, I would say almost everything about labor delivery and postpartum (laughs) was softballed to me in the, all the books that I had read. I'd read a lot of books and I had watched videos. I had taken classes, not Lamaze, but like whatever. And nobody, nobody was really honest. Like for instance, the labor books would be like, um, you might experience some contractions that <laughs> uh, might give you a sensation uh, that's painful. And you're like, oh, that's that sounds really sugar-coated because the truth of it is like, right before you give birth uh sometimes when you walk your pelvis will just like shoot up in pain and then um like just walking will be painful i've never heard that that happened um uh, oh oh i went into labor the first time and i didn't even really know because i do just feel like menstrual cramps 
And then I just took a lot of shits. I was like, I got a shit. Do I have to shit? Am I in labor? Like, you don't even really know. It's very, you think you're going to know and then you don't. Oh, so I made a list. Um, one thing I was really su surprised about when I gave birth to both my kids is um, how, how meat-like you feel when you go into all the exams. Like you'll notice towards, like the minute you're pregnant, especially if you do IVF and you do all that stuff, you like everybody's hand is in you like it's nothing like just oh here's here's the gloves and then here's your hand someone's other hand is in you and they're fidgeting around and fidgeting around and then oh should we check her so when you're dilating they have to check you constantly to see how far your cervix is opening and so you'll have like a different nurse come in and finger you and then like your doctor maybe will come in and finger you and then the nurse changes shifts and then they'll start fingering you <laughs> and you're just like and you're not in a mood to get fingered when you're in labor but they do it anyways and it hurts because you you're I think you have too much uh, your hormones are drying your cooch out and making the walls close it's terrible so that part real was weird um, what I thought was really crazy about labor both times is that because I, del I delivered vaginally that pretty much right after my epidural wore off, they make you get up and walk. <laughs> like they, they're they like, all right, bitch, let's go. And you're like, oh, I just fucking squir squirted a person out. And like an hour later, you're able to get up and walk with a walker, mind you. Like they, you know, they put you, you're very fragile and your, your insides feel like jelly because they're everything is now moved down and you'll you'll feel like your your insides are jelly for about you know a week at least everything kind of settles or two you're very fragile that was crazy um oh the pain of my uterus contracting back in was really weird I, on the second one the I guess the bigger your uterus gets the, the harder it is to contract back and I remember having such painful contractions of my uterus going back after Julian like to the point where I was like the pain meds would wear off and I would I would frantically like oh my god get the fucking nurse in here to give me another you know codeine pill or whatever because it was it was nar nar dude it was really it was not like that on the first time around um oh and here's a good tip for anybody who's preggers and about to go into labor soon this is a great tip I heard from my sister-in-law about pushing if you are pushing your baby out push through the pain of the contraction and I know it sounds counterintuitive when you're in pain, like you feel it contract and that's when they go push. So actually you want to push into the pain of a contraction because that that's your body. You're going with the, the flow, so to speak. And it sounds counterintuitive, but just remember that anybody who's about to give birth soon, don't listen to this goddamn uh, labor books and stuff about everything because... Like I said, when I first went into labor with Ellis, I didn't even know that I was in labor because it had never been described the way my exact labor was, right? Because you think like, oh, but I never read that that you just take a bunch of shits when you go into labor. <laughs> like, no bitch writes that in the what to expect book. <laughs> like, nobody's like, you're going to shit your brains out. You're going to want to take a shower for some reason. You're going to think that taking a shower is going to help you. <laughs> So you're like, I would look for like the bloody show. I would look for all the things I'd been told. And I just, my body went into labor crazily fast. Like they told me that I'd have to have a C-section. So I was like, oh yeah, I can't, couldn't be possible. But I went from like no contractions to my contractions being six minutes apart, which was crazy. And I didn't believe it at first because everything I'd read said, oh no, it's gonna, you could be in labor for days. You can walk around with contractions and not my body, I was like, boom. So listen to your instinct always, always, always over the books or what people tell you. <clears throat> because that, at that point I woke Tom up and I was like, I'm five minutes apart. We gotta go to the hospital right now. And thank God we did. Cause yeah, I was um, ready to drop that pumpkin out of me. So always listen to yourself guys. <clears throat> okay, um, hi mommy. I'm a 22 year old attending college and have questions about IVF. I have an extreme case of both endometriosis, hypothyroidism, and have been told that having children by myself someday will be almost impossible. I know IVF as an option, a lot of women choose, but I'm scared of all the needles and pos possible negative symptoms. Can you tell me about your IVF experience? Yes, I can. So um, remember that uh, you're going to feel like a piece of meat. 
Um, there's a lot of needles. Yes, it starts with blood draw after blood draw because they have to. So first you're going to go and you're going to get a consultation and they're going to draw your blood to see where your hormones are at at different points in your cycle. So yeah, plan on getting used to getting stuck a lot. And then um, you're going to have people giving you ultrasounds. So they're in your vag a lot. And you're going to wear, you might wear, you may not wear, you know, estrogen patches. Um, you may have to give yourself shots in the butt. I gave myself a lot of shots in the butt because uh, Tom was on the road a lot. And I got really good at taking that fucking needle, man. I, was, I would do it in my bathroom and I'm such an idiot. I never thought, am I sorry, in my kitchen. I would do it in my kitchen after I put Ellis down. To, and um, the way our old house was is like the windows were right there at the kitchen and you could see in from the street. <laughs> I was like, I'd be there after putting Ellis down and I'd just be shooting progesterone in my ass, like not thinking that anybody at any moment could like walk by. But I had a neighbor at the time actually who sh she was going through IVF too. And one day she goes, hey, this is weird, but my husband's gone out of town. Would you mind doing my progesterone shots? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, come over. So she would come over and I'd give her her shots and we'd have wine and, you know, I'd cook something for her and we ended up becoming good friends and she has a baby now um yeah expect to feel crazy because estrogen what jacks you up so you might feel more frantic progesterone chills you out so you might feel more tired uh, and then they give you a trigger drug that makes you ovulate so so sorry so there's two weeks that you're pumping yourself full of hormones to get those ovaries nice and heavy so that they can harvest your eggs um it's gonna hurt it, it feels heavy it doesn't hurt so much so then uh, after two weeks, Lupron, that's a shot they give you, triggers your ovulation. And then I went in early one morning and they put you under, they give you that awesome Michael Jackson sleeping drug and you go to sleep and they, they take out all your eggs that are there. And then you wake up, you go home and you feel like you're four months pregnant because you're, you're bloated and you're full and they tell you not to eat sugar or carbs because you're so bloated and that is uncomfortable and then they'll call you a day later, later that night, tell you how many eggs you have. Um, and then they grade them and then they can, you know, put them on ice or do whatever. So I put mine on ice. And then when we were ready to have Julian, I called them up. Okay, I'm ready. Put that turkey baster in there. And then again, they pump you full of drugs for a couple of weeks. You get your lining of your uterus nice and thick through the drugs they give you. And then uh, they take the turkey baster and you can see it on the monitor. It was, it was fantastic. I actually saw the moment my kid was conceived. It's like a flash of light when she injected him into my uterus and Tom, we were watching. It was magical. And then uh, five hours later, I got home when I was home. They tell you to lay down for 24 hours after. And I said, I'm pregnant. I know I'm fucking pregnant. I feel it in my tits. I always felt it in my tits. The middle of my boobs would hurt. <laughs> I knew I was pregnant. And, um, and they said, that's impossible. You can't know that. And I go, I'm telling you, I'm fucking pregnant. Boom. Because it was a five day embryo, which means it's already been five days along. So it was whatever it's in me. And I fucking knew it. And I was right. And there you go. And then Bob is your uncle. But anyway, it's listen, it's invasive. It makes you crazy. It's expensive, but it's worth it if we can get a healthy baby out of it. So I say, go do it, go freeze your eggs. And if you can do, um, a surrogate, gosh, do a surrogate. Ooh, let's do some mom fails. These are so much fun. I feel like I do these mom fails in my personal life every day, and I just don't write them down. My kid's been stealing Tootsie Rolls. Ellis has been stealing candy. We have, he's a guy, I found him in his secret stash yesterday. I was on a phone call, and he comes in, and he just, he reaches up, and he has a secret stash of Tootsie Rolls. I'm like, are you hiding candy, you shithead? I'm like, come here, give me one. At least give mom one if you're going to hide candy, you little turkey. I couldn't believe it. He's so now bright. Now it's time for a round of mom, mom fails. fails. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so this is, uh, let's do a video. Is this ripping diaper? Can we do that one? Um, I think video. some of these are tied to email, so I think start with the emails. Okay, let's and do it. And they'll okay. say if there's a video. Yeah, yeah, this one says ripping diaper off video included. Um, let's see, we'll find it. I was so excited to open my new 51 ounce French, pr oh yeah, this is one that came in a day early from Amazon. After using a 24 ounce one for the past few years, but the excitement fizzled out pretty quickly when I turned around to see my 11 and a half month old Excuse son me, sir? playing with his diaper. Yes. What is going on here? <laughs> Theo. <laughs> Theo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what the heck, man? 
<laughs> yes. That's what they do. They just rip them off? Uh-huh, yeah. Naked baby is what we call it at my house. Naked baby, naked baby, and they run around. How do they... I mean, I've never put on a uh, a diaper or anything, but aren't those, like, really, like, on there? Yeah, they're on, like, two pieces of tape in the front, so they can figure it out. And once they do, it's hilarious to them to rip it off and then run around or just play play with it. Yeah, it's so funny. Dude, speaking of shit, I fucking woke up this morning, and every morning Bitsy comes up and she says hello, and I give her a snuggle down. And I got up to go take a pee after a, and. There was a fucking piece, a nugget of dog shit this big in my bed. Yeah. Bitsy, I guess, took a dump and then like sometimes she gets nugs stuck to her butthole and she dr- left it in my bed. I was like, I'm going to throw up. It was Catch me outside. Oh, How about that? So narnar, dude. Narnar. What do you even do to uh, the, like the shove Bitsy's face in it? No, or? no. It was an accident. I think it was just like left over in her butt fur. Uh-huh. Dingleberries. Mmm. Yeah, disgusting. Okay, here we go. Oh, I don't want to do that one. That one's gross. <laughs> I have so many mom fails, but here's a juicy one. I use a birth control called NuvaRing. It's about the size of a hair tie slash rubber band, and it's like plastic and bendable. It stays in my vagina for three weeks, and then I take it out for a week and put a new one in. I was in the shower and remembered today is the day I need to take this bad boy out. I removed it from my vag and set it on a shelf in the shower and thought I'll... I'll, when I get out, I'll throw it away. Obviously forgot to throw it away when I got out and give my freshly turned six-year-old son a shower later that day and let him play and rinse off alone. When I get back a few minutes later, you guessed it, he's gnawing on my vaginal ring. <laughs> he has sensory seeking behaviors, meaning he chews on random stuff all the time. So messed up on so many levels. Piss on me, beat me. Yeah, that's uh, it's not good. <laughs> I think because isn't there like hormones in that thing too, like estrogen or whatever? I don't know. <laughs> it's not good. Not good. It's not. not good. It's not supposed to be a snack. Mm-mm. Not supposed to be a snack. God damn. Ooh, and you know we actually do have. Um, we have one from London. We have oh, a mom fell from London. London calling. <laughs> Hi, Christina. My name is London. Um, I'm a huge oh. fan of yours and Tom's. Thanks, London. I have a mom fail for you today, um, and it's from my mom. When I was seven, my mom let me stay the night with oh my God. strangers on vacation. <laughs> this is the best. Like, she didn't even drop me off, scope the place out, get to know the family, <laughs> nothing. A family just took me to their place. Um, <laughs> and I asked her not that long ago, I was like, why did you let me stay with strangers <laughs> in South Padre Island when I was seven. And she was like, they weren't strangers. I talked to them on the beach that day. <laughs> One conversation and she'll trust you with her daughter's life. My mom's always been way too trusting and oblivious to bad things. Um, but it turned out okay. I uh, just wanted to know y'all's opinion on that. Um, and this was... I'm only 19, so this was in 2007, not like in the <laughs> 80s where right. it was acceptable to do stuff like this. But. Like in the 70s, yeah. Yeah, thanks, y'all. Bye. Wow, London. I mean... <laughs> That's pretty interesting. Well, yeah, because I, I love this video because I was like, where's, where's she going to go with it? She's like, and then I was molested by <laughs> like this entire weird family in South Padre Island. But she's like, I was fine. Right. So, by the way, have you Which been... was a freebie. I feel like that should not, that's not how that should have ended, probably. Well, here's the thing. It's going to sound a little weird. Okay. Mm-hmm. First of all, have you been to South Padre Island? It's Mm-mm. in Texas, right? Mm-mm. Yeah. And it's a party town. I, I, I filmed... I worked on a TV show there once. And it's, it's like a spring break location. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... Yeah, it's, it's not like a low-key family place. It's, it's par- party. So, I mean, yeah, look, my my parents back in the day would let me stay over at, you know, class friends' houses. They didn't give a fuck, I feel like. And thank God nothing happened. But, yeah, your mom sucks. I mean, what do you think, right? Like, we're not perfect. Our parents weren't that protective. But I, I, I think that's... Chris, you're normal, right? That's not good. Would your mom let you stay at some stranger's place in South Padre Island? Yeah, I don't think so. That no. seems a bit extreme. 
Yeah, I, I think you hate your mom, and I, I think I would hate her too. <laughs> sorry, London. I'm sorry, London. You seem like a lovely girl. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like, uh, uh, you know, she's being primed to be a great comedian one day. Yeah, <laughs> right. Have you considered a showbiz career, a writing career, uh, podcasting? Yeah. Well, at least they made you interesting, and at least you didn't get hurt. But yeah, generally, no, that's that's even, that's fucking naughty. That is naughty. Okay. What else do we have? Do we have any Ooh, videos? Yeah. We, we, yeah, we have some but more fails over here. Um, so this one is from Brittany. I don't know if there's one over there that says <laughs> picture uh, Yeah, it doesn't. Hold on. Yeah, this is, I don't think this one even needed an email. It was just the picture. I don't even think you really need anything. She <laughs> said something about, like, markers are no fun was the thing. Like, yeah, basically this is a... T- <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> this is what kids do when you leave them with markers. I mean, it looks like she was trying to do makeup <laughs> like mommy. <laughs> yeah. Or an insane clown boss. Yeah. It looks insane. Yeah, she's just doing a clown check, right? God damn it. That's what happens, dude. That's what happened. It's just nonstop chaos with little kids. So you leave them alone for, for two seconds as yeah. a kid and they look like this. You leave them alone for two seconds as a teenager and they become a juggalo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I'm just looking at this because I'm picturing my kids. That's exactly the life I lead. It's like you turn your back for two seconds and they just destroy everything. They're throwing food down. Oh, God. All right, let's see. Let's see this one. Oh, I love this next video because um, the audio on this. So this is a baby walking for the first time, and the audio is so funny. Right. This is uh, this was given to us from Dylan. I love it. <laughs> Come get to be. George Westinghouse. Go get to be. Go get to be. Go get to be. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. oh. Good job. Yeah. That's totally how we are, because because they don't talk or, yet, so you can be like, oh my fucking god, motherfucking cunts, oh fuck, and then they repeat it, and you're like, oh no, yeah, that's rad, dude. Oh, what a cute little booby, what a cute little boops. Okay, when my daughter was four, she pulled a huge slimy booger out of her nose just as we pulled into the A and W drive-through lane. Ugh. I looked frantically for any Kleenex, toilet paper, or stray napkin receipt, anything at all, really. No luck. And her insisting, Mommy, take it. I finally told her I have no Kleenex. Put it back. And she slowly stuck that huge booger back up in her nose. Oh. What do you think? Is that a mom feel? A mom fail or a mom win? I don't know. Uh, that sounds like a fail to me. That's. I think that's going to do some long-lasting damage to that kid. Ugh. That kid now just probably thinks that's what you do when you don't have a tissue. Right. You just keep it in there. Yeah. This kid's going to get nonstop nose infections. Right. Because <laughs> that's, that's bacteria. That's yeah. Boogers, well, yeah. Yeah. Once it comes out, you do not put stuff back in. You don't put it back. Yeah. It's like toothpaste. You can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. You can't put the booger back in the nose. Yeah. And I also figure, figure um, like booger damage is part of the car. It's this part of the lease agreement between you and know I me. Mean? You're like... My car is going to get uh, uh, Cheerios and boogers and barf and piss all over it. And ju- it's yeah. just part of the deal. Exactly. And it's like, a, and that'll all be caught with one detailing before you bring yeah. it back, right? Yeah. 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 Boogers are dissolvable in water, probably. Did you ever know? This is so gross, but I um, had a really good friend in high school who kept a booger collection next to her bed on her wall. I was a girl too. Uh, wait, how old when you figured that out? Oh, how old we were you? like seventeen. That <laughs> is fucking foul. Ew, fucking ew, dude. She's like a really good friend of mine. Oh my, hold on, but she like grew out of it, right? Of course, she's still she doesn't do it today. anymore. Well, she's it's weird for a seventeen-year-old to do, also. <laughs> Forty-two and collecting boogers next <laughs> to her bed. Jesus Christ. Yeah, and at the time, it like you know when you're just with your friends so much, and you're like, "That's fine, that's just what she does." And then now you're like, yeah. oh, "So gross." It's actually real. It's interesting that you bring that up because <laughs> there are things that my friends of ten years do, <laughs> where if a new friend did that, they'd be gone. Right. You know, it's just like it's like a sunk cost benefit analysis. You're like, "Yeah, oh, I've already known them for so long. It's fine if they like, I don't know, fucking." R- 
collect their boogers and smear it on a special spot on the wall. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I know this person so well. It's like practically a sister, so forget it. But man. Yeah, but like, let's say, boogers. okay, so, so hold on, Christina. Here's yes. a hypothetical. <laughs> Let's say, you know, because, uh, you know, you're still learning new stuff about Tom, probably, right? So you find out now mm, maybe. that in every place that you lived with him, yeah. there was a special corner and a special room. I know what you're going to say. Where he collected. Jizz. I was going to say boogers, but yeah, let's run with jizz. <laughs> <laughs> a booger. So he had his own booger wall. Like he had a booger wall that he kept from you. It's just like, it's, 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 in, it's like under the kitchen sink or something, <laughs> somewhere you'd like somewhere where you just wouldn't look, you know, like a place in the garage, mm. a place in the workout I think, weight room. Can I tell you something? I yeah. think Bert still does this. Oh I, yeah. Without I, a doubt in my yeah, mind. Yeah. I think <laughs> Leanne, like Bert has a booger section. I think Leanne probably discovers things every day about Bird that she did. Oh God! I think there's there's still in the discovery period. I don't care. That wouldn't phase me. Like I'm kind of. Would you even give a talking to, or no. just like, huh, all right, I guess that's a thing now. And no, I would just let him do it. Like, oh, there's his. Because I think, oh, you know person, what he does Christina. do. Oh, what? You know what he does do. In his car, he'll he'll pick his nose and then he'll roll, and then let the booger like he'll flick it down around his seat. So there was one car that he had, and I remember I would get in and just see all of his rolled boogers like around his seat. I was like, ugh. I'm like, don't you fucking do this in my car. You're so nasty. Ugh. Whoa, and you were okay. Wait, were you guys already married at the time when yeah. you discovered? Wow. Yeah, I don't care. So I'm he like, kept that from you for a minute. He didn't keep it from me. It was just his unconscious thing that he did. Uh -huh. And then one time I, I was like, I saw him doing it, and I was like, oh, that's why there's – Oh, those are boogers. <laughs> like I, I just didn't notice the boogers until I seen him doing it, and I was like, "Oh man!" It was the Kaiser Soze moment where yeah. it all just connected. You're like, "Oh my god, that's this whole time I thought that was lint." Yeah, <laughs> yeah the Matrix all made sense. I was like, "Oh, you're so nasty." But don't you think everybody has their nasty, their nasty? Like you just oh, everybody. Absolutely. I'm a, I love picking my nose. I I I do. Oh yeah. It's like one of my favorites. Oh my god, the best is when you have like one of those long strands. <laughs> yeah. Right? And then you just like it's oh, like love. a magician pulling like <laughs> shit out of his sleeve. <laughs> just like, oh, when's this gonna stop? And the feeling that you get yes. from a booger unsticking deep in your nostril is, is the best the feeling. The best the feeling. I agree. I'm really big. Or when you blow your nose and then like it dislodges a big one, you're like, oh, wow, that was like a bonus bug. Yeah. You know what's crazy? It's a really good day. <laughs> I didn't even really blow my nose. Like until I want to say like late high school. What? I would just like wait, like you know when Why? you wake, well, because you'd wake up and like you'd have like a stuffy nose. Yeah. And you'd be like, oh, you gotta clear, you gotta clear the pipes. Yeah. But for me, I was just like, oh, I guess my nose is stuffy. And you just let it go. And then it would just go. And then like I think at some point late high school, I blew my nose in the okay. morning. I'm like, wait, I could. Okay, everybody's vomiting. That's All right, sorry, sorry. Show. Moving on. Let's go on. Um, <clears throat> I want to do, it's tied to email, so I can't, oh, I wonder what the picture is. Fuck, it doesn't say here. Um, is this still in fail? Yeah. Or it's, hmm. Hmm. Well, I don't think I have any more pictures here. So oh, yeah, we're fine. Yeah, Next. Let's, okay, let's, let's move, move on. To. I want to do, can we go into my favorite one? No, let's do mom hacks. Okay, I have a great mom hack to share with you guys. Um, mom hacks, you say, huh? I fucking love it. <laughs> mom hacks <laughs> mom hacks what a beautiful voice fart simpson made that oh fart is so talented um so this trick i learned um from my nanny the other night my kiddo pissed his bed pretty like yeah pissed in his bed pretty bad and i had to go change his sheets in the middle of the night and everything stripped the bed down and i was just like so tired and i'm like mother fuck i don't want to change the sheet and lo and behold, I pulled off his sheet and this brilliant woman, the sweet treasure of a human that helps us with our children, did this brilliant thing where she put on multiple um, sheets. So there was like five. So all you do is just you take off the top layer and boom, you got a freshie underneath. I was like, dude, this is, I was so happy in that moment that she had done that for me, I was like, God bless the man. Like, I I love her so much. I love her. So, I treat her so well, just so you know. Like, I, 
hook that bitch up. No, I believe I, it. You take you take care of everyone. I do. In like in your circle. Thank you. You're very sweet. No, I mean you it's it's true. No, I'm I'm honestly not. Christina, you fucking I do. you I said love you like you. sent me a duvet cover when you I when I asked what I that word you. meant. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna like the way you look. I guarantee you. <laughs> you gotta love the way you sleep. You know what I'm gonna do? If there are any bachelor boys listening, <laughs> maybe we'll um. I don't know where I can post it, the links, because uh, it's really simple to put a classy bed together. The reason I do this for uh, for, for Nadav and, and all these, I mean, <laughs> is that when I was 20, 20 years old, I had this boyfriend that had like adult sheets. <laughs> you know, like we were all in college, but he had really nice bedding. And he's the one that I, I saw a duvet on. And I was like, whoa, what is this? Like, this is magic. This is so, so neat. And I really thought of him as a mature man because he had really nice bedding. And I'm telling you, it makes all the difference. If you're a single guy listening, you want a lady to stay naked in your bed, get dope ass shit. Now, hold on. Yeah. I, I have a question about how this whole duvet, what's a duvet and how's it different from a blanket? Okay, so a blanket is just one layer of like whatever. You just throw it on your bed and mm -hmm. it's just simple. So it, there's a duvet that's made of usually feathers, but I got you one that's not because the feathers break and actually gets worn down over time. Okay. So on Amazon, you can just get like a synthetic fiber duvet. So that's just a thing. And it's a blanket essentially uh -huh. full of beautiful bedding. It's so soft and it feels like heaven. So and duvet then, means thick blanket? Yeah, I don't know. You know, it's, it's European. I think okay. the reason they call it a duvet is because it goes in the cover and then you, you know, seal up the cover and then you wash the cover and not the duvet. Okay, you understand that, that's starting to make sense to me. Right. Because so I remember, I don't think, I think I've washed my blanket one time. Yeah, it's gross. And it was only like the one time that I tried to like eat in my bed and then I spilled <laughs> stuff on it. And of I was course. like, oh, I got to wash this. <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst, yeah. And that was the only time I washed my blanket. Yeah, I don't really, I like duvets because they feel better. They feel heavy and soft and good. Yeah, it feels like the hotel stuff. Now, here's yeah, a question. I, so I sleep rad. pretty hot, you know, like I yeah. get hot at night. Is that is it going to heat me up? Well, here's the thing about the duvet cover is that it oddly keeps you warm in the winter, cool in the summer. Oh. I don't know how. I think it's the, the fiber in it. If you get the goose feathers or whatever, the, the, the filling is not just like hot, hot. It, it's a, or you just kick it off, you know, you don't like it. How exciting. You're gonna fucking Thank you, like, thank you again oh, for the duvet. <laughs> you're gonna shit your panties, no, <laughs> you're, you're gonna like the way you look. So, but that's a great mom hack, you guys, is layer, layer, layer the um, the sheet, the sheet that goes on the actual mattress, and then that way you just rip one off, and then you just keep going. Okay, this is a fucking brilliant one sent to me. Uh, toy freeze. By the way, I stopped buying my kids toys pretty much like fuck toys. Here's what I buy on Amazon. I get glow sticks. I get glow, um, glow strings. I get balloons. I get water balloons. I get like little bullshit. Cause that's really what they like at this age at two and four. Okay. So this woman here, Oh, it's so brilliant. I froze a bunch. This person, Holly writes, I froze a bunch of his little plastic toys in water in a big Tupperware overnight and then gave him a cup of salt and a sponge and some warm water and a fork and a spoon and he sat there for an hour and a half trying to get the toys out of the ice brick how brilliant is this it was awesome that's pretty smart that's fucking ingenious i'm doing this so you get a bunch of little toys like plasticky dinosaurs and stuff and you freeze them in a big tupperware container and then you basically make them go on an archaeological dig for their for their toys brilliant oh my god so it's first it takes like it's it's a time release yeah. of fun and then yeah. so once they get all the toys out oh my god then you get even more time cuz now they get to play with the toys oh dude yeah it's awesome well this is a whole thing this is a whole thing and especially destruction little boys love destruction i don't know if little girls do too but uh, this is great for their destructive tendencies. Oh, yeah. This taps right into d destroying shit. They're now, gonna like that. Now, here's the thing that I, I would be a little concerned. About. Now, granted, I don't know anything, but like uh, like leaving them with salt and stuff. What if they get in their eyes? No. Yeah, they learn quick. That's that's the lesson you learn. Oh, oh. Yeah, fucking salt in your eyes now, crybaby. <laughs> um, they they don't. I mean, if they do, it's like okay, that's a. You know, whatever. Okay, so salt in the eyes isn't <clears throat> like a trip to the emergency room. No. Okay. I, I don't no. know. I just, you know, I, I don't know how no. uh, vulnerable these kids are. No. This one is amazing. It says, this is from Kristen. Hey, cool mom, you've mentioned the hose as the best toys for your boys. And I still stand by that. Those guys play every day with the hose in the front and in the backyard. And I got them a water table as well. You can get that on Amazon. 
very simple water table. They can put the water balloons in there. They can put dirt in there or whatever. But this is ingenious. Kristen sent me this video. I bought a cheap old school lawn sprinkler for my toddler and she loves it. Best $17 spent on Amazon. Look at this sprinkler and look how much fun this little girl is having. Oh my God. Look at that. Yeah, perfect. I said, I she loves it. Lovely. And that's a good toy for if you don't have a lot of space, maybe you just have a, you know, even a, a balcony. You can put that out there and let them fuck around. How fun. And they love that. They love water. What a cute little girl. Oh, my God. Oh, and it makes me want to have a little girl because they're just so cute. But I'm too old to pop out anymore, kids. Oh, my gosh. I love Fair Harbor shorts. And now that we're starting to socialize again, it's a great way um, to look good this summer in summer clothing. Fair Harbor has reinvented the swimsuit by replacing the mesh lining with their super soft built-in boxer brief liner. I bought these for my kids, for my husband. Everybody absolutely loves it. My husband says that they're the world's most comfortable shorts in the world and they're versatile. You can swim in them, run, hang out, do whatever, whatever, but you're never going to want to take them off. And here's what's really unique about this Fair Harbor. All their products are made from recycled plastic bottles. Isn't that neat? To date, Fair Harbor has recycled over 2.5 million plastic bottles, keeping plastic out of waterways and off of beaches. So why not? So 20% off for everyone listening right now. Head over to fairharborclothing.com and use the code MOM20 for 20% off. That's MOM20 and say goodbye to mesh lining forever. If you're like most people, you almost never go to the doctor. I mean, maybe when you're sick or hurt, but that's it. So finally, there's a practical and affordable way that you can take control of your health long term and get personalized care from the comfort of your home. This is fantastic. Steady MD is your personal doctor online. It's telehealth done right. It's so simple. All you do is you go to their website. You start by taking a quiz. They ask you a few questions. It's very easy, very intuitive. You get matched with a licensed primary care physician who understands your lifestyle and your health needs. Next, you have a one hour appointment with your doctor to start a real relationship. And that's really unique. A whole hour with a doctor. I mean, come on, when can you even do that in face-to-face uh, -face encounters? And after that, your doctor is available to you anytime by text, phone, or video chat. So unlike other services, there isn't a random doctor on call. Each steady empty doctor has a limited number of patients. So they have time to listen and give you the personal attention you deserve. All from the comfort of your home. Skip the waiting room, skip the germs. Why not? Prescriptions sent to your home or local pharmacy. Come on, all your medical records are in one place and you get unlimited access to your doctor for only $99 per month. That's pretty remarkable. SteadyMD is now accepting members of all ages in all 50 states. So you're going to go to SteadyMD.com slash WMMA to take that free quiz I was telling you about and see which doctor is a perfect fit for you. SteadyMD.com slash WMMA. There's no risk and no long-term commitment to get started. That's SteadyMD.com slash WMMA. And we thank them for sponsoring this podcast. Okay, <clears throat> can we, I got to do this segment. I am dying to get here. Let's do it. I am dying to get here. <laughs> so a listener wrote in and said, you know, uh, we hear a lot from the moms. Let's hear from the dads. And I thought that is a fucking great idea. We have so many guys that listen to this show. So guys, this one's for you. And I asked you on the gram yesterday to write in and let me know what are some of the annoying things that your wives do? Because I hear a lot, we hear a lot about the other side. So I complain a lot about what dudes do. Here's the stuff from annoying wife. And some of these made me laugh so fucking hard. Hold on, let me talk. Let me, I gotta write down something as I do with my husband. Cause I talked to Tom about it too. Okay, <clears throat> this is fucking amazing. I'm Jay, my wife is Sarah, an ER nurse that loves your show. Very good. And brings a smile to her face after a stressful day. So I thank you for that. But it doesn't stop the fact that she drinks any beverage like it's a damn bottle of wine, <laughs> making this annoying swishing noise in her mouth. It's just fucking lemonade. <laughs> she, so she's like, like, mmm, mmm. Mm. 
like that. Oh, how gross. My mom one time dated a man who drank Coke. He would, he would jog a lot, which I just, I don't know what it is in a man in tiny jogging, like 80s jogging shorts. It was so gay looking. But anyway, he had a horrible mustache. And he would take a can of Coke after he ran, which was, you know, no one drank water back then. And he would take the Coke and then mm, do that, like swish Coke in his teeth to clean his teeth out. Like, is that not the worst thing you could do because it's sugar? Jesus. So, yeah. And so she was going to marry this. Guy. <laughs> and I was maybe 11 years old. And I said to her, mom, and this is a direct quote. I go, mom, how do you lay that guy? And she was like, really? Do you think he's disgusted? I was like, he's revolting. The swishing of the Coke. I was like, that is a deal breaker for me. I could not watch this man do that stuff for years. So she broke up with him. She broke up with him. I don't know if because it was Because of that? I think it was, <laughs> I think she needed me to give her the final, like, you know, when you're like on the, the fence. Yeah, yeah. Permission to mm -hmm. break up with this guy. Wow. Oh my God. His name was David. That was, oh my God. He was disgusting. Dude, how do you even, I remember Ugh. when I was a kid. I think I tried swishing uh, soda one time and your mouth explodes. Yeah. Because it like the carbonation like needs a place to go. The carbonate and the sugar, like everybody knows that Coke rots your teeth. It's <laughs> yeah. the last thing you want to swish. So I get it, dude. I get it, Jay. I think that is the swishing noise is so vile. So you know what my husband does? It makes me bananas. The horking sound, the <laughs> that sound makes me want to just crawl out of my skin. And I, yes, horking is not a word. It's my word. It's what that sound is. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. And this is my favorite. Oh, and she eats the skin off the grapes first. What's wrong with this woman? <laughs> I've seen people do that one too. The peeling the skin off. Oh. I've done that before. Right. Cause that's like a fun. Right. When you're a kid and stuff, you're like, oh shit, you could peel these. Yeah. And then like a peeled grape. Like the texture's way different, but not enough to keep doing it. Not enough to do it every time. Definitely like, not. For every grape. God, she sounds like she really savors her food. Mm. You know what yeah, I mean? How do we fix that? <laughs> yeah, can't you just shovel it in like us and have emotional problems? Um, my favorite is the subject. The guy wrote grape peeler and dumb drinker. <laughs> oh no, I, I, uh, was I that came, you? Yeah. I, oh. I come up with the subject names. <laughs> I love it. You always have good titles. Thank you. Okay. Here's the next one from Tristan. Hey mommy. I thought I'd chime in. First off, I love my wife and I'm lucky to have her, but of course everyone does annoying shit. So here's hers. She always leaves stuff on the counter after she's done cooking. I cook as much or more than she does. I put things away as I go, like a decent human being. She always leaves electronics on when she's not using them, like lights, the mouse for our laptop, the TV, etc. cetera. Uh, and the thing that pisses me off the most is her interrupting. A lot of days it seems like I can't finish a goddamn sentence without her cutting me off or butting in. It drives me fucking nuts. Have a good one, mommy. Keep them high and tight. Oh. I would say that the cutting off is annoying. And I know I do that to Tom. I'm sure I do. Yeah, I think I do most of this shit, too. <laughs> I like, I, I think I do all of this. I th I, like, I definitely I catch myself like, oh, shit, I'm cutting off a lot of people, I feel like. I feel like I just get excited and I do it. Yeah. And then because you just uh, want to be in on the conversation. You're like, you're like, oh, yeah. Let's... <laughs> yeah. And then um, I definitely leave stuff out on the counter and I all leave time. on all my electronics all the time. Yeah, I don't, I'm good with the electronics. Tom's good with the electronics. He leaves everything out too. Tommy's bad at that, but so am I, so am I. Okay, um, okay. Uh, here we go. This is from Corey. Hard to whittle it down to just one. I think my top two would be number one: moving important things into closets, cabinets, drawers, and boxes to keep everything from looking cluttered, and two: stolen valor. Corey, how dare you? <laughs> uh, but yes, moving important things into closets, cabinets, drawers. That is so annoying. That is yeah. so annoying. But here's the, like, I feel like you almost can't get mad at it because the intention was good. You know? Yeah. She wants to keep things looking yeah, neat. She She's wants right. to declutter, but yeah. it ends up causing more problems than, than it solves. Because here's my problem is that 
if I don't see it, the object doesn't exist. And the same with Tom. Like if we don't see it out, I'm never going to use it. I'll forget that I have it. Out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. So for me to like put things away, it just means I'll never use it again. Right. So you might as well, if you're going to put it away, you might as well just go to Goodwill and just drop it off forever. I, I know. Right? Just drop it away. Just put that in someone else's drawer forever. Oh, God. Okay. This one's good. Brock here from Battle Creek, Michigan. When she tells me to look for something that she supposedly left in a specific spot and it's not there. Never follows Proto. <laughs> I've done that to Tom a few times where I'm like, no, the keys, they're on the credenza. They're on the, the go look there. Come on. You're not even looking. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah. So it's, your, it's their fault that they can't find it. But, it they're, is. but they're acting on bad info. Bad info, bad intel, mm, bad proto. Mm. Now, but here's the deal is that Tom is a, the laziest looker. That's why I'm the seeker because I, he'll literally, I'll be like, let's say this pen. Tom, can you go and get the, the pen off of my table? And then he'll go, I don't see it. It's not there. It's not there. Because he's lazy and he wants me to look for it. That's my subtext that I've added. Um, but he won't find shit. He's just not a good seeker. Okay. Okay. Never follows Proto. Here's another one. My wife is notorious for placing the lid back on top of a jar of something, but not screwing it on. Oh! Death sentence. That would drive me crazy. That's fucked. Yeah, that's how you ruin things. That's how you, yeah. And not only that, so the person would probably go and pick it up, and then now the, the lid pops off. Right. That's terrible. No, yeah, that's, I remember I did that one time, and I ruined a jar of peanut butter and spent the that's next, like, said. 10 minutes. The yeah. next 10 minutes, like, you're fucking cleaning. Here's an example. He says, she'll use peanut butter, but just place the lid on top of the jar uh. when she's done. So I'll come in to clean up, grab the jar that I assume had been twisted closed, and only end up with the lid in my hand, or it falls to the floor. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. yeah. I've done it with ranch. Like, the liquidier. <laughs> the yeah. It's, let me tell you. Oh, no, the ranch. It really turns you off a ranch <laughs> when you see that much. You see a pool of it on a floor. It's just it's like, ugh. So much smelly, too. Yeah, so it, much ranch smell. Yeah, it's pretty pungent. Well, you know what I'm, I've am i been doing is I, uh, I've i got a spice rack that I made due to my anxiety of this quarantine. Ooh, you yeah. made a spice rack? Well, no, no. I mean, like, I bought it from oh, fucking okay. mm -hmm. whatever. The but you assembled it, The great store, yeah. and I assembled and did it. And then one day, I didn't put the lids back on oh, the spice. No. Yeah. Yeah, so I went to go use it, and it dumped all out. Such an idiot, man. Um, wait, hold on. Did it go into the? Did it ruin the food of, also? Of course, oh, I had to no. spoon it out. But you can spoon it out real quick because it's just on the surface. But yeah, fucking a, man. Bomber, dude. Such an idiot. Okay, what pisses me off more than anything is when she sings when I'm in a bad mood. I'd rather step in dog shit barefoot than to hear her sing. <laughs> Singing is super annoying. It is annoying. We've learned that on this show. <laughs> she sings. The sh I wonder if she's doing it to antagonize him. Like he's in the bad mood and then she's like, I see you're in a bad mood. I'm going to sing and make you angrier. Right. Yeah. Like, like maybe like, is she trying to make it worse or is she trying to make it better? She's trying to annoy him. It's still, it's, it's to fuck with him. Definitely. What a, what a bummer. Definitely, because if Tom's in a bad mood, mm -hmm. the last thing I would do is be like, you're in a bad mood. <laughs> like, I would probably be like, oh, jeans. See, but maybe, like, what I'm thinking, I'm playing, I'm just playing devil's advocate sure, here. Sure, Just playing devil's advocate. Yeah. But what if she thinks, because maybe her husband has never called her out on her singing, it's like, oh, you know what? You know what uh, he loves to hear? He loves singing. to hear me singing. <laughs> Because maybe he said one comment where he was trying to be nice, and then she took it to heart, and he never corrected her on it. Yeah. That's what I'm imagining in my head right now. Yeah, because in, a, in our relationship, Tom would be like, don't ever do that. I want to <laughs> like he, he would immediately go, like, you're, that's terrible. I hate what you're doing right now. Just, <laughs> well, communication's good. <laughs> yeah, like, we're pretty, we're pretty open with each other. So, like, that's the worst sound. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this one makes me laugh so fucking hard. This is from Philip. This one I read to Tom because I thought it was so funny. Every time we're watching a movie and something cute happens, I can just feel her staring at me. <laughs> Here's the best part of this because we've all had a friend that does this, right? We are watching a movie and they're like, that's us. And they fucking look at you all pie-eyed. Yeah, it's the worst. 
He goes, I never look at her while she does it, but I can feel it through my peripheral view. I may be the asshole for not acknowledging it, but for some reason it bugs the ever loving shit out of me. Yeah. Cause you hate her. Like, I feel like, cause I know the person that would do this to me and I hated her. I hated her. Like we were friends and then it, it, it you know, it turned sour and she would do the same pie eyed shit to me. Like, <gasps> I'm like, Oh, he hates her. Yeah. This guy doesn't like his wife. Does not. Right? Don't you hate when people do that and you're like, don't look at me. You ever had a friend do that? Like, super annoying. Yeah. But, I mean, you just have to call out the shit that you don't like. Be like, what are you looking at me for? Stop looking at me. Yeah. yeah. Or, like, lean into it or play, you know, fight fire with fire. If you feel them looking, just, you know, I, that's an invitation to a staring contest and make it uncomfortable look for them. Look at them, yeah. Yeah. Make them regret thinking that was a good idea. I just feel like the person that does that to you is generally an annoying fuck. The only people I've ever known that have had the audacity to do that where they're like, <gasps> like Ugh. I, I don't like those people. It's the same. It, do you think it's the same people <laughs> that when you're watching something with them that they've watched? Like, oh, watch this part? Yeah. And you're like, yeah, that's what we're actively doing. I hate that. <laughs> God, I hate that. What this part, this Wait, part. Wait, so what So what would you do? What did you do with your friend? Broke that... up with her. Stopped being friends with her. Oh, you you uh, straight up explicitly told her we need to stop hanging out? Well, because it was more than just that. Like, that's a symptom of a greater problem with that person. Like, she was annoying generally. That mm -hmm. was one of many things that I was like, I'm going to beat this bitch in the <laughs> fucking face. <laughs> and then that was the camel that broke the, uh, the straws back? Well, it was one of many, and then, you know whatever we slowly stop being friends okay here's one from uh ben she speaks down to me when angry oh god that one's a deep cut that's like a real one though <laughs> that's like marriage counseling shit <laughs> that's a deep cut that's a deep cut ben you gotta talk to her because that is important to fight to fight fair right it's important I mean, although Tom and I, like, I can tell when we're getting out of the argument because we'll start joking. He'll be like, why are you such a piece of shit fuck face? And I'll be like, I don't know. Why are you such a dumb fucking idiot? And then we'll laugh. <laughs> but we call each other way worse things. <laughs> what I just said was, I can't even tell you what we really call each other because we'll probably get uh, canceled. <laughs> It's so much fun. Okay, Christian says she doesn't give me blowies very much. Now, we've covered that topic extensively on where my mom's at. There is a huge scarcity of SEX going on in married people's lives. And I tell you, I, I've always encouraged the women who listen to this show, it's so easy just to put out, just put out. And then, like, he's happy, you're happy, everybody's happy. You know, you just, you just got to do the bare minimum, even when you don't feel like it. I know. And I know that's not PC or whatever, but I don't care. Okay. Uh, this one's interesting. This is from Nick. Um, I've been married for three years and my wife won't stop leaving the toilet seat up. I didn't mention she was trans. I'm trying to figure out why my wife never puts the seat up. I constantly fall in because I like to sit when I pee. Any advice? So she's trans. So hold on. Let me put my, she leaves it up. Oh, because she transitioned from male all right, female to male. Right. So she's leaving the toilets. He's, oh, I'm confused. But anyway, I get what you're saying. Yeah. It's a spouse that I know. It's, oh, I've fallen, I've fallen in so many times because Tom has done that to me, especially oh. in the middle of you the like night. You like to be sitting down also? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> so what, do you, wait, hold on. You legit <laughs> fall into the toilet? Yes. And hold on. The water hits, hits your butt? Yeah. Because uh, if you leave up the toilet seat, this is what happens is that in the middle of the night, like I'll come stumbling in and then you go, uh, oh, and then you just like, <laughs> whoopsie, it's cold. Wait, so do you, do you need to like then take a shower afterwards? No, I have a bidet. So I rinse off my tush with the, the water. Oh, that's a lifesaver. But here's what helped me is um, if you can, there is a thing you can get on Amazon. It's like a light that you can put in the toilet. Hell yeah. Have you I seen have, that? I have one of those. Oh my God. Yeah, it's the so, motion sensored one. Yeah, it's Hell so yeah, good. Dude. Like I always, okay. I've been married for, I've been with this guy for 15 years by the time and I, 
And what I've discovered is that he and I have the same fights for 15 years. Like <laughs> this, your partner's never going to probably change this behavior. So you have two options, either a outsource the problem, which means hire a cleaning lady, hire whatever, um, get groceries delivered. If this person, you know, if it's that kind of an issue, if it's a behavioral thing, you just got to do a workaround. So, um, your partner's never going to remember. So get that light. So that way you're not plunking in there and it'll give you a nice reminder to at least look in the bowl before you go and uh, do your business. So there you go. I'm curious about your relationship actually. She's, she was trans. That's so interesting. Nick, so she was trans and your name is Nick. So you're maybe a boy. I don't know. I'm so confused. Yeah, I think it might be a man married to a trans uh, male to female. I think that's what that is. That's so curious. I would love to talk to you, Nick. I'm just curious what it, it, what it's like, like to know both sexes and then convert over and then I bet it's great. <laughs> okay, let's do uh, I got one or two more. Hold on, I love these. I love these. Keep sending these into me. Where my mom's at at gmail dot com two one three three seven five five one eight four. Send me videos. Show me video evidence. Oh my God, this guy listed three. Are you ready? This is the best, best. When my wife tells me she's going to wait to eat until I get home from work so we can eat and spend time together, then is angry when I come home because she is starving at this point, knowing full well what time I get home because it's the same time every day. Yes, of course. Everyone's done that one. I've done that one. <laughs> you need to tell that bitch to have a snack. You ever heard of a fucking snack? That's tell definitely her. the move. Yeah, have a snack, bitch. <laughs> you know what you should do is just leave a snack for her. So she doesn't freak Ooh, out. Ooh, then it's thoughtful. Right. And then you're seen as like the hero. Yeah, Again, like you get points. She's not going to change the behavior likely. So you just have to work around people. Okay. When she needs some alone time because the kids are making her crazy. So I take the kids out for a few hours, then gets upset with me because she thinks she missed an epic family bonding moment when we just went to McDonald's. Of course. So, oh, here's a trick I do is, um, when you're doing that, okay, bring something back for her. People love prezzies. So when you go to McDonald's and she thinks she missed out on Epic Family, make a video where the kids are like, hey, mom, I know, God, I'm thinking of whatever. Make the video for mom so she doesn't feel like she missed out. Yeah, show evidence that she was thought of. She was thought of. I, I swear to God, it'll save you. It'll buy you so much goodwill and bring her home a toy. Or a happy mm. meal. Bring always bring back treats. Yeah. This is another way to manipulate your spouse. <laughs> it when works you, both ways. It does work both ways. So if you get some time away from the kids because your partner has taken on the children and you're out having a good time, um, to avoid your partner resenting you when you get back, because there's always a little bit of that. Right, right, come on, always buy them treats. So that way, I get home and there's like a chocolate croissant for Tom. So then he he sees it as a positive reinforcement. <clears throat> there you go. Okay, we'll do a few more. My wife complains about baby bottles going missing in the house, always. She bought four packs of baby bottles but refuses to open the other three packs because she doesn't want to spend all day washing them. I guess spending all day looking for them is better. <laughs> she will also let her fingernail clippings fall on the floor ugh, instead of clipping over the garbage can because the vacuum will eventually clean them up. I've witnessed her mother do this also. That is foul and disgusting. That is disgusting. She's like, well, they'll get picked up eventually. She's like a dude. No, that, that's, that's, that's immigrant parents for sure. <laughs> you know, I know. Okay. <clears throat> this is from Steve. It gets annoying when she checks in every 10 minutes during quarantine to make sure the three kids, 12, 10, and 2, aren't dead under my watch. Keep feathering it. Now, that's a deep cut because, you know, again, like I was saying at the top of the show, well, what do women want? Well, we want you to take care of the kids but we're positive you're not doing it right because you're going to kill them. So if, you know, I guess the lesson there, ladies, is like if he, if he does do it, just let him do it his way. Let him do it wrong, basically. <laughs> okay. My wife and I currently live and work out of our 700 square feet square foot apartment. I sit at the folding table in the kitchen. She works on our countertop. Every single time I get up to grab a snack, stretch my legs, or take a dump, she looks at me and genuinely asks, where are you going? <laughs> I'm going to make an air shit on your pillow. That's where I'm going. 
I know. Isn't that so annoying? What are you doing? What are you fuck? What? We're in quarantine. I'm doing nothing. We're doing nothing. We're all collectively doing nothing for four months, guys. Yeah, I'm going on a nothing. six month road trip, but not telling you about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. nothing. <laughs> well, I remember when Tom couldn't find anything when we lived in like a not even a seven night, like a maybe a 500 square foot place. I'm like, really? You're gonna ask me where stuff is? We don't even have places for things. Okay, here's a quick top five for me, writes Bob. Filling bowls with water after eating and leaving them in the sink instead of putting them in the dishwasher. Oh, yeah. Repeating, oh, this one's funny. Repeatedly using the term hard work and mama with her friends. <laughs> I can only imagine how annoying I am with Tom and my dumb phrases. <laughs> Repeatedly using the term, oh, we just said that. Pulling a blind up, putting, pulling a blind up in such haste that the right side is up 12 inches higher than the left. Hilarious. Parking in the middle of our two-car driveway. Trying to fit all 17 loads of her dirty laundry in the washer at the same time. Guilty, guilty. I do that. That's hilarious. I'll tell you what I do. That I asked Tom. Well, I don't have my phone, but I asked him the other day. I was like, what do, you do? What do I do? He's like, oh, oh. He goes, when I'm on my phone and I'm reading something and you go, what are you reading? I always ask him, like, what's going on in the world? Because I don't want to do it. I don't want to do the work. <laughs> or he goes, when I feel you reading over my shoulder, like reading my phone, oh, I want to kill you. I'm like, yeah. Um, what makes me crazy what he does is when uh, when he bites his nails, especially now, and he's, I see that finger in his mouth, and we've just been out. And I'm like, you're going to get the Rona. Get that fucking Rona finger out of your mouth. Um, what else do I do that's super annoying? I leave cups everywhere. I take like, oh, I open a can of soda, I take two sips, and then I'm done. I, I'm such a jerk. I waste. Oh, God, I'm sure I do so many horrible things. I don't know. It's all annoying. All right, let's go. I want to hear more from dads. I want to know your world. Yeah, what, do I, what, what, what should they tell us about? Uh, I want to know everything. Tell me, give me some serious stuff. What bums you out about, about your wife, about being a dad? Because I feel like women, we get all the, the glory when it comes to complaining about parenthood. But tell me what's the hardest part about being a dad in dad world. Mm. Tell me that. Tell me the fun stuff. Tell me the good, bad, and the ugly. I want to hear it all. Yeah. What's your, what's your favorite thing about raising kids and your least favorite thing about raising yeah, kids? Yeah, or just the role of dad. Because I do feel like you guys get shit on a lot. You know, the women's movement right now is kind of, uh, we're, we're really going for it. And we're, with good reason, you know, we've been re repressed and angered. And and I just, you know, we at some point we need to all get along together and find love. So how do you guys feel? How do you feel just about life, about, about everything, about marriage, about raising kids? Where my mom's at at gmail.com, 213-375-5184. I don't know. What's a specific one they can answer? Because I feel like any time that a dad has submitted a, a hack, the the flavor of it is always much different than a mom hack. Yeah, that's what I want to get to, the yeah. root of that. How do I yeah. get to be more dad -like? There's usually like power drills involved. <laughs> Like, it's like a much more, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, they complain about, uh, you know, a toothache. You just, uh, you rip it out. And it's yeah. like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, tell me your dad woes. I want to hear. I want to hear. Let me let me know how I can be a better wife to my husband, a better a better person. Ooh, what you know? do you wish your wife uh, did for you? Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. I like that. Like, what could you use more of? What could you use less of? I guess. Yeah. When you have children, when there are kids in the picture. I you like know? that. What yeah. would make your life easier? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. And then um, from women too. What What do you really want? From your husband's that's interesting because do we even know can we articulate that thing i don't know mm. i don't know i don't know fun stuff uh, okay you guys this has been a great show thank you native thank you chris and uh, zolo i don't know if he's in the booth he's running around um and thank you guys for watching for listening for downloading and until next time stay cool moms bye where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at Where my mom's wearing thongs, hitting bongs at Raising kids, cleaning shits, need a long nap Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at Where my mom's